Hello there. And welcome to a, another Monday Messages in the Garden with the Mental Mystic. I am Donna Kreis, also known as the Mental Mystic. So yesterday we had the new moon and it was in the sign of Pisces. Pisces is a very watery sign, very emotional. It is the sign that has the strongest psychic abilities. And so I don't know about you, but I, as well as those around me, were feeling rather off. By the end of the day, things started leveling out and started feeling better. Today, it, it's still a bit of a holdover for some of us. And um, just all up in our heads, the sign is in Aries now. And Being an Aries, we sometimes will run out ahead of ourselves, <laughs> not knowing where we're going until we run into something, head on into something. And some around me are feeling that running into something, I think. And they're all up in their heads. <laughs> so not that it's funny, not that it's funny. It's just, um, it's funny how these things work. And being able to stand back and see the greater mechanizations going on and I feel compassion for those who are going through challenges right now. I truly do. And um, my youngest teenager, my youngest daughter, who's a teenager and a senior in high school, she's having challenges. And it's like I told her, if I could save her the pain, I would. But I know that it's necessary, that it's growing pains, and we all go through it. We all go through it. Even when we think that we're done with something, we just spiral, spiral back around to it and come at it from, from another angle. And so we still experience the same challenges until we finally heal from them. And it's really hard as a mom seeing any of your kids go through challenges. And all we can do is be there for them and hold space for them and love them and let them know that they're not alone and offer what bits of wisdom we're able. But in the end, it's their journey. And that's true about any of our loved ones. It's their journey. As much as we'd love to save them from the pain, it's the challenge and the pain sometimes and the suffering that comes along with it that helps us to grow and expand. They're growing pains and the suffering. The suffering is the resistance to what is. And that's not necessary, but we as humans often will engage with it. We feel 
we think that it should be different and that we shouldn't be going through this. But again, we'll keep going through it at different angles from different directions until we finally heal from it. It's when we are aware of the situations that we're going through that we can recognize, yeah, I need to heal from this because this is coming at me again and there's a reason for it, but it's not always easy and we don't always have the answers. And when we can step aside, when we can ask for assistance and allow the assistance in that we're able to better navigate it and heal from it. So recently on the blog, I wrote a blog post called Chatting with Spirit. And at the beginning of this year, Julia Cameron, better known for her work um, of the artist's way, she released a new book called Living the Artist's Way. And in it, she spoke of her, her morning pages, but she also mentioned seeking guidance, asking for guidance. And it made me smile because it's something that I've been doing for years. And I've been going through my old journals recently. And I came across a conversation that I had with Spirit back in 2012. And I didn't realize I wasn't conscious that I was doing that back then, but it's something that I do all the time now. And it's, Julia Cameron calls it asking for guidance, but it's chatting with spirit. It's going to spirit with questions, seeking advice, seeking guidance, seeking assistance. And listening, consciously listening and being aware of the response and writing it down. I call it chatting with spirit. So I will put a link below this for that blog post if you're interested. But this human experience is not easy. It's not easy in the least, but we knew that coming here. We knew what it was going to be like and we were excited for it. The challenges, if we didn't have things that challenged us on so many levels, this experience would be boring. Quite honestly, it would be boring. And if we were in a high vibration all the time, that's what home is like beyond this realm, beyond this world, that's what home's like. And we came here to experience different. We came here to experience the life of a human through the senses, even with all of its challenges, because the truth is, yes, the challenges are a pain in the butt, a pain in the heart, but the gifts, the celebrations, the love, that 
is worth it. It's worth it. And what we need to realize is that we're not alone. Going through this, we knew we would not be alone because we knew that our family, our soul family would not abandon us. And though we cannot see them, they are always around us. They are always whispering in our ear. They're always loving us. They're always sharing healing energies with us. We can't always hear them. And we can't always see them. Because they are vibrating in a higher dimension than many of us are privy to right now. Keep going. That's what I hear is keep going. Every challenge, every situation we go through makes us stronger. Even though I know people don't want to hear that. But it makes us stronger. And we are spiritual beings. I'm seeing swords being honed and being pounded. It makes the metal stronger. It makes our spirit stronger and we don't have to do it. It doesn't have to be a fight but we fight against what is. We can go gracefully through it. We just have to be aware as we go through it. Love ourselves, have compassion for ourselves and anyone else who is going through it with us. It doesn't have to be a challenge. It doesn't have to be difficult, and we're not doing it alone. We have the love of so many souls. We have the love of universe, source, spirit, God, goddess, whatever you want to call it. Unconditional love beyond what we can perceive. So now that I've got uh, gone through that, let's draw today's cards. So I'm going to do this differently today. I'm going to do a single video. And then I will put the time markers beneath the video so you know where to find the card that speaks to you. So, I want you to feel in. Does card number one hold your message? Or maybe it's card number two. Or even yet, it might be card number three. What number are you hearing in your head, in your heart? Lock into that now. And then pause if you need to. Pause the video. And then we'll get started. So, card number one is lizard regeneration and it says as a survivor you are unparalleled no matter what happens you can adapt embrace your transformation put on your new cloak 
you are a master of regeneration. And that just goes right along with what we've been talking about so far. And it, it's interesting because on uh, Substack, I've mentioned that it has the notes feature. And if you go on to my Substack and click on notes, you'll see a note that I shared as a response to someone on Substack. And she was asking, what have you survived? And I'll pop over there real quick. And I said, my body, my heart, and my mind have survived sexual molestation as a child. Mentally and emotionally, I survived as a military spouse throughout my husband's military career. My heart has survived raising two children and is bolstering itself as one more prepares to spread her wings and fly from the nest. My body has healed from colon cancer. My heart and mind are still in the process. Beyond these things, I have survived and continue to survive all the little and big hurts that come with experiencing life as a human. I invite you, I will, again, I will put the link below for this post, but I invite you to share, if not with the community, share with yourself, celebrate the things that you have survived, the things that have steeled you, that have made you the person that you are today. What have you survived? And remember that you are a master of regeneration. As a survivor, you are unparalleled. No matter what happens, you can adapt. No matter how it feels right now, if you're going through something right now, no matter how that feels right now, you can adapt. You will survive, as Gloria Gaynor says, I will survive. Embrace your transformation. Put on your new cloak. This will make you a completely different human than you were yesterday. You can do this. And you are not alone. If you have challenges hearing the cacophony of voices in the spirit realm that are speaking to you, that are loving you, that are telling you that it will be okay. If you have problems, challenges hearing this, come to me. I would be happy to, if not voice, give those voices a voice in this realm, then I am happy to be a voice of support, of grace, of love and compassion for you. You are not alone. You are not alone. I hope that resonated with you. I hope that gave you hope and bolstered your spirit. You can do this. You are a master of regeneration and transformation, or you would not be here at this time. Okay, so maybe card number two was your card. And it is Butterfly Rebirth. 
you can reinvent, reinvent yourself. Open to the rewards of change. You have brilliance to share with the world. Love every part of your journey. Don't resist it. Don't fight against it. That is where the suffering comes from. I know that it may not be what you want to be experiencing right now. I know that things might not be going the way you want them to go. But they are always going toward your highest good. Maybe you can't see it right now. But things are going for your highest good. It'll be, it'll probably be something that you'll be able to see down the line and realize, oh, this sucked going through. But what came in the wake of it is freaking awesome. You can't see that right now. And something came to mind, the butterfly. So the butterfly starts as a caterpillar. We all know that, right? It goes into its cocoon. And then it turns to some kind of ooze in its transformation process. It turns to ooze. And then it restructures itself. And eventually, it comes out as this beautiful butterfly, this beautiful being. When we're in our challenges, we often feel like we turn to ooze. But what comes out of the cocoon once we're done is simply beautiful. There's no other way to express it. It's beautiful. And I don't know about you, but I've turned ooze a lot of times throughout my life. And I may turn to ooze a lot, of, lot more times in the remainder of my life. We develop resilience. And that resiliency, how we go through the situations, that's our beauty. And who we come out as, we generally have more love to give, more compassion. That is, if we haven't allowed our changes, our challenges to make us bitter. You can reinvent yourself. If things are not going the way you want them to, write down how you want them to go. Envision them in words, in pictures, however you best envision things. And then feel it. Feel it in your spirit. Feel it in your soul. Feel it in your body being, your body, what would it feel like if that vision came to pass? Don't spend your time on envisioning everything that could go wrong. What if the universe clicked and everything went right and in your favor, what would that look like? What would that feel like? And then go into that space. 
spend as much time in that space as you possibly can. And then reinvent yourself. I hope that was helpful for you, my friend. And then we will go on to card number three. Was this your card? This is Sea Otter Happiness. Be the master of playful living. Release expectations and enjoy every day, every moment. Let worry go and instead choose love. Surrender to the waves. Your good destiny of love is sure. And so it looks to me like these cards are telling a story. So we have the lizard regeneration. And then we have rebirth, the butterfly. And when we're reborn, it leads us to greater happiness. We can't always see it. But happiness is a choice. We can choose to get up in the morning and we can listen to our minds as it tells us all the things that are wrong with our life. All the things that we're facing that has the potential to be crap. Or we can look at our lives, be grateful for all that we are given, all that exists in our life that is good, and focus our attention on that. So I officially reached menopause back on the 7th. And since then, I started, ex well, actually, probably the middle of last month, I started experiencing some back pain again, lower back pain. and. I went through it. I went through it and I could have complained about my back and how it hurt. And I could have allowed it to trickle into the other areas of my life. And allowed it to filter, put a filter, a negative filter on everything else. You know what I did? I was grateful. For every step I took, even though it hurt, I was grateful because I was still walking. I was still walking. And I let that be my focal point. I am grateful that I am still walking. I'm doing some supplemental things, drinking some tea, getting into a wellness routine again, and it's doing better. It's doing a lot better. But it's a choice. We can choose to let our challenges put negative filters on everything else in our lives, or we can choose to be happy despite what's going on. No matter what's going on, we can choose to be happy. We can laugh. We've been doing some yoga, doing some laughter yoga here in the garden 
recently. And yes, that laughter starts out being contrived. It does. But as we go along, and this was something that I learned recently, you can hear someone laughing and you can, I'm just thinking of somebody laughing and I can feel it bubbling up within me and we laugh too. Yes, laughter yoga is contrived, contrived laughter and it starts out that way. But as time goes on, I've realized you start genuinely laughing, even if you're laughing at yourself. I mean, there are times when I'll be doing the laughter yoga and I'll just look at myself and start laughing genuinely because it's funny. Laughter truly is the best medicine. It's one of the ways to get us into a higher vibration, one of the quickest ways we can get into a higher vibration. So if you haven't tried it, give it a go. I'll put the link in below too, in the com or in the, the uh, description below. So, and if you are not yet a subscriber, I would love for you to click that bell and become a subscriber and then you'll get notifications anytime I post something new. So I hope you have found this helpful, my friend. And I hope you realize that you are not alone. Yes, I am building the garden as a business. But I do have a lot of free offerings. If you would like to be a part of the garden community, I will put the link for that below too. You are not alone. You are not alone. Oh, deep breaths. You got this. I believe in you. You got this. Until next time, my dear friend, I hope all is well for you, that you are visited by so much love and joy happiness and laughter. Until next time, take care and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.